Um, okay, well, thanks everybody. Uh, so our one agenda item tonight is to go through the uh, master plan. Um, with, I should say, use the master plan as a guidepost and some of the deliverables from the master plan to hopefully help us kind of hone um, what we might be asking the university to do for us relative to any sort of visioning about the Route 9 corridor in particular. Um, so, you know, what I did is I just went through and I highlighted everything in the vision goals and strategies from the plan that seem to be related to this particular conversation. Okay. And then the let same- me bring, Let me bring that up. Okay. And that's over here. There we go. So, uh, yes, this is the visions, goals, and strategies page, which um, is a little wordier than the implementation schedule page. Mm -hmm. But let me just scroll up to the top, and then we can go wherever you want. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I found this section to be the most helpful because it did have a little, it was a little bit more robust. Um, so I'd suggest we might use this as the guidepost um, to start, but I'm open to other opinions. Uh, one yeah. thing I wanted to mention just after my review, I, I kind of, I know we were supposed to pick like our greatest hits top three. Uh, mm -hmm. I ended up writing down like 13 of them. And it was mm -hmm. only because there was significant overlap between many of the goals uh, and I'll summarize my findings and just that a lot of them seem to be uh, proposing, uh, you know, zoning overhauls, uh, whether it's overlay districts or rewrites, they all kind of seem to be talking about the the zoning code and, and either the limitations of or exclusions of the zoning code as it stands right now. Um, so I don't know if we want to, I, I can read through my 13 items, but I don't think it's really necessary. Um, they all kind of say the same thing. Let's just address the zoning practices. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be a little more a, a little narrower focus than we're looking for. We do have access to very specific drafting assistance from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to and we're working on various zoning bylaw updates and modifications. So I'm not sure that it is the best uh the, the, those would be the best projects for some sort of a studio, unless the theme was learning how to draft a zoning article. Um, the um, that part of it gets pretty tedious um, as you try to imagine everything that could go wrong. Um, right. Sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't suggesting that that would be the scope of the UMass studio. Just that I think a number of those goals could be solved sort of by, by reframing the zoning practices. And so maybe the scope, if, if we're interested in the UMass Student Project Studio, uh, the scope could be to zero in on the Route 9 corridor uh, and propose that the students look at projects uh, on maybe particular sites that uh, not ignore our zoning, but maybe work with a zoning code that would be more in line with what the goals of this master plan state. So one one question um, in my mind is, um, you know, it seemed like they're two distinct um, geographies in in the master plan. Um, you know, so there's there's the Route Nine corridor, which would include the town center, right? Um, but it's almost like the town center language in the master plan kind of stands on its own. And so one question I wanted to put out right away was, 
do we want the project to be that expansive that it would include the entire Route 9 corridor and, and take this town center into consideration as well? Or do you think it would be better if we isolated it to, you know, east, everything east of the, the uh, town center? Or even further to just a specific, you know, like the malls or something like that. Does anybody have any thoughts about that? I think that might in part depend on which program uh, we put the student project through. If it's the architecture program, it behooves us to pick a site and then give some kind of like high level overview of the program, whether it's mixed use multifamily or something like that. Uh, for the landscape architecture programs or regional planning programs, the scope would be different and probably broader. Mm -hmm. I think I, th th there's one thing that I'll put out as far as that goes too, is that um, I wouldn't look at this as a one-off, you know, um, opportunity here to work with either LARP or architecture. I think this could be a continuing relationship. Um, and so, you know, it might be something just as you think this through um, that, you know, this might be something that could be attacked in bite-sized chunks um, rather than some, you know, something that's more comprehensive, um, you know, beginning some, you know, with a smaller um, location first might be a good thing to kind of provoke a longer conversation with the department and, you know, how they're thinking about it and how they might help, um, you know, uh, kind of frame, um, the directions that you, uh, that might help you frame the directions in which you want to go. So. I was also hoping that, um, and I'm assuming Tony, you got copies of these. I didn't think to share them with, uh, our two guests from last time. Um, yes. the <laughs> other part of it was, I was hoping that if this were laid out as sort of a menu, um, that, a faculty member, as we were told, they have interests all over the board, that maybe a faculty member would find a task in here that really meshed with what they were doing anyway, or what they would like to like to do. Um, so I don't, I don't think we're going to try to say this is, these are the three things we most well, we could say these are the three things we most want, but if there's something in there that looks um, interesting, that would be another way to approach it. Mm -hmm. I my, like sense, that, yeah. my sense is that throwing all of Route 9 out at one time is too big mm -hmm. a task. And the master plan does talk to one of the sets of tasks were uh, perhaps doing basically chopping up the, uh, the road into multiple, uh, multiple sections. Uh, I would be more inclined to get some, maybe something on the, the heavy commercial from the bike between the bike path and the Amherst town line. Mm -hmm. Part of what we are dealing with out there is we're, we're really spending a lot of time reacting to proposals that come in. And um, we don't really have a unifying theme, except that that's where the, uh, the bigger and the uglier buildings can go. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm sorry, I don't. The other area that might deserve some attention because it has been pretty quiet is the stretch between the uh, town common and the bridge. That's still a section where there are a lot of small properties. Um, there are probably a few rental. I'm not sure there's anyone actually living there as a family home anymore. But um, that's an area that has been dormant because it is so uh, chopped up uh, with properties. Um, and then you get something like, um, uh, oh, pride coming together and stitching a few pieces together and putting up a big, a big station. 
So that would be another area that might benefit from some visioning, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I can make a proposal, I think, um, so the student project and then the potential for uh, faculty involvement, you know, via a consultant agreement style relationship can probably cover different scales. And I think, you know, the sort of larger Route 9 visioning might be better suited for the latter, whereas the student project, uh, just knowing on the architecture side anyway, um, the scope wants to be a lot more uh, digestible, given that it's such a short period of time that they're actually studying it. Uh, my proposal would be that we look at, for the student project portion, we look at maybe the town center or um, the commercial area, like the, the malls, uh, and select those as, as sort of scope boundaries with the potential to explore some of the larger themes and larger planning moves that we're talking about via the consultant arrangement with faculty. So uh, I, I'll just throw in some of my thoughts. Um, as far as the Route 9, I think that, um, yeah, the section by the, uh, where the Christmas tree shops were down there, that's its own little area. Um, that's been, it looks like it, it has been difficult to keep. It's, it's, it's hardly ever busy. It, 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 it's its own little mini area. Now the area that's down by Route Nine, I mean the the main area where the Walmart and all that is. I think some of that um, by Target. Well, I guess it depends. Right now, I think that's really important with the parking during Christmas time. One of the things that's nice is when I go out in town, I can find parking, and I'm not going to get a uh, parking ticket. And you're going to always find something, but there's parking. Um, if we get too dense, you're going to have trouble. I, when I go over to the other towns, you know, I, that's one of the reasons why I don't go there sometimes to eat because I don't want to deal with the parking or, or walking to wherever I want to just park and go in and eat. So the parking has been awesome. And, and, and that is a big plus in Hadley. Um, now the mall is its own thing. I think if the mall was going away or there was something going away, you know, they're not doing something in the mall. That's its own little area because it has its own parking. But, um, you know, that's my thought was some of the stuff you have to be careful and in, 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 in it is important to keep that parking. Yeah, that's yeah, a, I think a really great point. And um, one thing just to add is I, I actually have talked to the pyramid group a little bit sort of professionally um, <clears throat> about their, their goals and they've been converting uh, sort of underutilized parking lots and whatnot in some of their their malls to great success, both you know for their businesses and you know, drawing new business. Uh, and they are particularly interested in the Hampshire Mall. And what I got as kind of informal input was that basically the JC Penny half is underperforming and they could do without. Um, so that might be sort of a trade off, right? Where we're talking about putting a little bit more density, we're we're taking out some of the uses that aren't being fully utilized yet. Yeah, I like I like Justin's idea of carving out, um, and again, kind of with, with no, I'm going to say no strings attached, other than in the spirit of the master plan, like using mm -hmm. the points in here as a guidepost, and maybe offering up the two um, two projects for students. And and I mean, we know the Hampshire Mall is, uh, you know, interested in uh, they. I mean, they can continuously are trying to figure out how to make things work. So they're very open-minded about future possibilities. So I think it would be, you know, a, a very helpful project for the students to work on maybe the Hampshire Mall site. Um, and then, I, and I love, I just think the village center idea could be so, so creative, you know, I mean, people who don't know what they're not supposed to know about property ownership and all of that stuff just coming in and um, kind of reimagining Railroad Street and that whole section. Um, mm -hmm. Those do seem like kind of tangible, um, manageable projects for, for the student work. Um, and I completely agree that the Group 9 corridor, um, which quite frankly, and then it's a question for Bill, I mean, I would think that would be 
incredibly helpful to the planning board to have boots on the ground really working on that in the co again in the context of the master plan yep, possibly i think the uh some of the other areas, though, they as you, you mentioned, Railroad Street, and I actually uh, did work with a planning student some years ago, not from UMass, who wanted to explore basically creating a pedestrian mall on Railroad Street. Mm -hmm. um, that was his key, capstone, keystone, whatever you call it, project where where he was, mm -hmm. and. Um, um, I actually don't remember much more, but I talked with him about it extensively. I'm, I think he did send me a copy of the final product, but I, I don't recall that I read through it even. But, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, there, there certainly are some projects like that, that uh, but I could see something like re reimagining Hampshire Mall seems like a manageable task. And um, it would be useful to be ready for when we do have to reimagine Hampshire Mall. That seems to be trending and not in a good way. Yeah, I think both of those sites are actually maybe good candidates as well for a joint architecture and land architecture studio if somehow the plan is aligned and we can make that happen. Um, with the architecture studios, you're going to get a lot of building ideas, but sometimes the site planning is a little light. Um, but the joint studios, you know, they really dive in deep on the, you know, the pedestrian experience, the planting buffers, you know, those sorts of things kind of come from the joint studio, but it might be a little harder to make that happen. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think that I would just love to see is um, an is an assisted living, like a, 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 a facility, a good, nice facility for assisted living. Um, it, and, and uh, yes, affordable in some ways, but not to be listed as just affordable because what happens is sometimes I feel like if you just, you know, people might need it down the road and, and, and they might have a house and, um, and they have, okay, a decent, somewhat decent pension, but they're not, they don't have a ton of money, right? So they might be out of the bracket of affordable because they have a pension. Well, yeah, maybe that pension comes in at 3000, but the affordable living is 5000. So yes, they need to make it something. So, so it needs to be so that the, that it's not, um, it is affordable, but yet we have a lot of people here that you know, or selling their house, then they're going to have money or different like things like that. We don't want to make it so that they can't go in, right? Because I found that sometimes the, the middle group of people are the ones that are having a tough time. The, 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 the people that have quite a bit um, don't have any problems at all. And the people that have nothing, well, they can get in too. But the people that are right in the middle, sometimes it's really tough. So Anyways, we have a lot of people that have these old farmhouses or own their house, but you could see when Barry Roberts project went in, those were like hotcakes, right? So they went fast. People loved that. They wanted to downsize into those, but they could afford them at that time because, you know, they sold their house. <laughs> so. well, and the, the neat thing, Amy, about kind of this visioning of, of Route 9, um, you know, in the, again, in the master plan, it's talking about um, you know, as Bill mentioned, you know, creating different zones where, you know, perhaps you want to kind of guide what's what's there. And we, we could kind of have it all. I mean, the plan's very specific about more senior housing and whatever form that takes, whether it's apartments or, or like you're saying, assisted living. Um, and then housing that work, working people can afford, right? So that whole concept of workforce housing, which again is very much targeting uh, regardless of age, targeting that middle, you know, the middle class that seems to be um, getting poorer and poorer, you know, as time wears on. So, so I, you know, I, I, I still like the idea of us trying to really think about not 
just the mall. I think the, the mall could have many of these housing elements in it if they, they wanted to propose that, but we have an awful lot of real estate to work with along Route 9. Um, you know, uh, and again, the master plan, it talks about kind of repurposing some existing properties, you know, and there, there are definitely some places along there that aren't very attractive any longer, um, if they once were. Well, would it be too ambitious to, <clears throat> or too vague to talk about the, the project being to define areas that would benefit from different zoning along the length of Route 9? I mean, that's another layer of uh, mm -hmm. do, do a sort of a survey of what's there, uh, what the use patterns are, and whether they would support, you know, we can figure out the exact terms, the language of the zoning, but to actually define the regions of Route 9. I don't know if that's really within the scope of these various programs, but it would be, uh, it'd be an interesting piece to have to work with. And then go building on the future that, okay, so we have four distinct pieces of Route 9. Big box, smaller box, a few residential uses still there, um, and, um, and then next year we can dig into one of those sections and build it piece by piece. Like a modular think, approach. Yeah. Yeah, I think to Tony's earlier point, um, it that's a great prospect for an ongoing relationship. So, you know, where the first studio might focus on site X next year, you know, during the fall, the next studio, if they choose to take it on again, could do site Y. Um, I think what you're what you're describing about like maybe highest and best use for zoning is probably better for a regional planning capstone project and just trying to be frank and honest it, it's you'd have to really find that student and it would be likely just one student and if they aren't don't have interest they won't take it on as their capstone project um so my gut says that that's probably less likely but certainly something we could explore with the program but couldn't the that's in that where the faculty could play a role like he specifically mentioned um what was it uh research project yeah i'm trying to What's the gentleman's name? Um, You're talking about Henry. Henry. Yeah. Henry. Yeah. Um, that, you know, there were other faculty that, because this is where they live, that mm -hmm. they would love to take a bite at this apple. And then the result of that work, like Justin's saying, could then be translated into future studios. Yeah, that. so that's where we're talking about kind of two separate attacks mm -hmm. at this, right? So the the student work really wants to be more narrowly focused unless it's a regional planning capstone project. Uh, and then if, if our recommendation, you know, to the select board or, you know, however we go about it is to pursue the faculty relationship as a consultant, um, then that larger scope is, is much more appropriate there. And, and to Henry and Steve's point, when they were discussing it, um, you know, interest on the faculty side would be needed in order for them to, to choose to take that on as a sort of extracurricular. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that there's any harm in, in you know, um, taking all these ideas, listing them, and then, you know, maybe starting to divide them up then afterwards so that, you know, just like Justin was saying, like the, the things that are more narrow in scope, um, you know, you can identify them once you have them written down on a piece of paper, right? And I mean, I think that there's a bunch of really good ideas here. I don't think you want to lose them. And, you know, again, I do think of this as an ongoing relationship. You're not going to achieve everything in one semester or one academic calendar year. So, um, you know, this might be something where, you know, you're only going to get interest, um, you know, on a particular project with, you know, architecture faculty for now, you know, but that if there are these ongoing needs and, you know, with, the, with, with Hadley being so cl close to campus, I mean, what a great place for, students to learn or, you know, for, um, you know, for these to be graduate, um, you know, uh, student capstones, et cetera. You know, I mean, like there, there, there's a lot here. Um, and I would just encourage you to like, just let, let's get them down on paper um, and then, you know, represent them to Steve and Henry and see, 
you know, again, ask them to like kind of weigh the options and give us, you know, a sense of what they think is possible in what time frame, what would cost money and what wouldn't cost money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and quite frankly, I mean, I think that anything that has a housing focus, the grant opportunities are pretty significant right now. Um, so I, I think, you know, normally we cringe every time we think about having to spend money, but I, I think that there are a couple of different ways that we might be able to, to fund something like this. Um, so I'm less less concerned about that than I normally would, would be in this type of a conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. Whenever they do the project or whatever we're looking for, I mean, they're, they are only ideas, but I think that it's important that the first thing comes first is where's the sewer? So we need to focus on what are we going to do about an increase on our sewer? So, right. And um, I'm still, I, uh, I've reached out to Guilford Mooring over in Amherst a couple of times to find out where we stand with the um, engineering work that's, that's, being done right now so that we can potentially uh, have shared sewer services with the town of Amherst, which would be a huge part of that Hampshire Mall concept. Remember, I think any kind of student work though, isn't gonna really solve the question of the sewer system, right? I think that what it's gonna do is present a bunch of ideas first, right? So they may be solutions to one end, but they may cause problems on another, the sewer system being one of them. Um, and so, you know, I, I would look at this kind of just as an opportunity, especially if it's a student kind of, you know, a student project, undergraduate student project, it, it's much more about what ideas, what conversations can be spurred from that. I wouldn't think, you know, I would hope that, you know, any kind of project that would go forward, especially if it's an undergraduate project around architecture, and Justin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, would be put out there with the caveat that this is a visioning exercise. And, you know, it's, it, it's as much play, it's serious play, but it's as much, you know, play to get people to think, you know, about what possible scenarios could occur rather than, you know, that this is a fixed future. Um, you know, there will always be, I, I think, you know, to your point about the sewer, you know, in, infrastructure issues will, will certainly come to play like the real practical building issues later. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right, Tony. And, and, you know, it's just a sort of proof is in the pudding kind of comment, the UMass uh, Oliver design building was actually my thesis project. And then several studios took that on as a project after that. And it eventually got used to write the proposal for the grant money uh, that eventually paid for the building to become real. So that's, you know, it's an iterative process, but it's ent in entirely generative. It's intended to put ideas on the table that maybe people hadn't thought of before, which then helped to craft the path forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, with that in mind then, so wanna start creating our list then? So we've got, um, and, I, and I guess another, another question is, so if we say, I mean, you know, just reimagining the Hampshire Mall parcel, right? Um, do we want to merely tie it to the master plan goals or do we want to, further define and say that we want um, mixed mixed use, mixed housing? Um, I think a conversation with, you know, the professor who's going to be leading that studio would would help to define it, but I would, I would suggest we keep it a little looser for this round. And so saying something like, you know, mixed use with housing component that includes uh, affordable housing for workforce housing and uh, potentially senior or assisted living, that's probably enough scope to at least start the conversation um, in developing the curriculum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got the, the Hampshire Mall. Um, Bill's idea about the uh, Town Common, uh, you know, the western end of town, the Town Common to the bridge. Throw that one in there. Yeah. The reuse of existing, there won't be too many existing buildings there. 
be the consolidation of properties in order to build mm -hmm. larger developments. Yeah, I actually think the, the railroad street, that whole, you know, block, if you want to call it that, would be a great candidate as well, because there's a lot of underutilized properties there that are really begging for higher use. I can just see a craft brewery in the uh, Mish potato plant. Yeah. Yes. Now we I've have heard to discussion of that one before. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then uh, kind of the rest of the Route 9 corridor, how do we want to attack that? I, I don't know that I could define a site along the rest of that corridor that would be appropriate for an architecture studio. Um, that's probably more of a planning piece, especially with the preservation of open space as a prime target in our master plan. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only a couple of sites that I could think of which might be viable, but it's it's really not in keeping with the the majority of the goals in the plan. I, I think the uh, we can deal with the preservation of open space elsewhere. <clears throat> We've committed Route Nine to commercial since we it, it is the business district that appeared on the original zoning map from 1962. So uh, I think the town is prepared to give up something along Route 9 for the greater good of the rest of the town. But maybe we just put out as, a, as an alternative. It, I, I'm sure there may be students who don't want to dive deep into something but might want um, more of a survey course. So or survey theme, uh, just um, not land use surveying per se, but just uh, an overview of a stretch of Route 9. Um, I, I wouldn't want to rule it out as an option. I wouldn't necessarily expect much from it, but um, it's sort of, a, it's like an independent study course, if you will. Uh, University without we really want to look at Route 9 have you do you have have a thought on how to look at a piece of route nine that we haven't thought of mm -hmm. that might uh trigger someone's interest just so to say like pick your own yeah right? uh, yeah pick your own um with the mall uh, the hampshire mall would be a big thing to not have a vision for but uh, so that would be more important to us but if there's something else that really tickles the imagination, um, <clears throat> there are plenty of opportunities out there, um, and it could be it could be a good educational experience for the student, and maybe it will lead to something for us. Maybe it won't, mm -hmm. but that's okay mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So to that point, I have actually. Uh, uh, seen a number of studios where there are multiple sites and the students sort of pick from the yeah. sites so that there's an opportunity there. You tend to dilute the results a little bit because you're getting fewer students kind of analyzing and studying one site, but certainly something to talk about with UMass as we you know continue to advance this further. Mm -hmm. Talking about the, just to bring up those two sites again, the um, the one down by the um, uh, Hadley Meeting House uh, versus the mall. When when I mentioned the um, the housing for the um, um, for the elderly, like the assisted living, I, I didn't, wouldn't necessarily think it would be the best idea to mix it in with a whole group. In in my thinking, it would be more like. Okay, say down by the uh, um, Hadley Meeting House, maybe you have that like a um, like an Arbor's or a or um, a Christopher Heights um, facility where it's just and it's focused on uh, medical stuff and, and stuff for it depends on on where you are in your um, you know stage um, being elderly. 
But maybe. the other one maybe is a mixed juice. I mean, I can see the other, you know, maybe the mall mixed, but not necessarily. When I mentioned assisted living, I think it needs to be a focus on the real assisted living uh, mixed in. But Amy, Christopher Heights in Northampton, that's exactly what they've done. Um, Christopher Heights is right in the middle of all sorts of other housing. So they have affordable housing across the street. They've got condos right in front of it. And then they've got all of the um, private development homes behind it. But not in the same building, right? Oh, no, no. no it's, it's a standalone building. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah I'm, no, I'm thinking the same buildings or the same facility. Now, when we say mixed use, typically we're, what we're talking okay. about is, is like on a, on a, a site or you know, region. Um, sometimes the most mixed use you really see in one building would be the, the maybe first or second floors would be commercial retail or office space with the upper floors being dedicated to a housing use, whether that's uh, workforce housing, market rate housing, or assisted facilities. Th those are mixed use is kind of a, a just a term to indicate, you know, that you might have affordable housing adjacent to market rate housing adjacent to assisted living, but each exists as an independent element of that program. Okay. I just guess I didn't have quite the vision under understanding that. <laughs> so there are two other parcels that we know are in play. <clears throat> One is the uh, Bab Farm, which was the site of the proposed 250 40 units of uh, housing. And as uh, Mike Sarzinski said at our last planning board meeting, it, we know it's in play. We got to do something about it. So that would be you know, what is what are some concepts for using a piece of property in that location with those constraints? And the other is the um, the uh, the site of the late and unlamented uh, five college library annex, which is a very awkward piece of land that stretches between North Maple Street and Rocky Hill Road, but uh, has wetland constraints and. Uh, it, it's an awkward site to make something of, um, but it would be in, perhaps interesting to uh, to have a fresh set of eyes take a look at what could be done there. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the tiny house village is going to go, Bill. Unfortunately, it's swamp, not on Swamp Island. <laughs> Might be a little bit of a mosquito issue. <laughs> I originally thought when I saw that the first proposal, I thought that was I, I, that of that units. I did think it was quite interesting, especially when I heard that they were going to take the sewer at their cost over to Amherst. I thought that was intriguing, but... And it is more of the going towards, it looks like it almost feels like it was in Amherst and the it's in the industrial area where the other UMass places are just going up further. But I would have, uh, you know, here's the issue with that is it is in someone's backyard. And we saw how it went when we tried to, when they tried to put something behind Newton Street, right? Um, Newton Road there, when they wanted to, Whole development in there and there people said it's in the backyard and they did not it just didn't fly because it was in someone's backyard so I get that mm -hmm. so I mean do we think that we've got it I mean it seems like all of these projects really address a lot of what is in the master plan or they address something that has popped up outside of the master plan. Um, something that raised its hand and said, I want to play too. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through the list I've got so far. So the kind of the reimagining of the, what we're calling um, the Hampshire Mall property. Uh, reimagining the town common 
to the bridge, so the western end of Route 9, uh, Village Center, the pick your own stretch of Route 9 and show us what you've got project, uh, Bab Farm, and then the uh, 40 or whatever acre parcel off of Rocky, oh, not off of Rocky, um, off of uh, North Maple. Think yeah. oh, passes the weight test. <laughs> and, the, and for the village center, the, the Railroad Street Pedestrian Mall might be a project in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think of it as basically that whole Goff Railroad. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of between West Street and um, Middle Street. Is there any space down by Cemetery Road? Limited. Several of, the parcels. Uh, several of the parcels inside the dike are in APR already. Oh, okay. And the parcels outside the dike are unbuildable. Okay, so if we got this written up with a little bit more specificity and get it to um, our contacts over at the university. Can, I mean, I, I guess, Tony, this is a question for you because um, this is, you know, the world according to our committee. And as we mentioned before, we certainly want to make sure that the select board and the planning board are aware um, that we're doing this. And again, there's no commitment. I, I don't anticipate anybody having an issue, especially since we're talking about it being in concert with the master plan. Um, but we would just want to be doing that simultaneously. Um, does that make sense? You mean to bring it back to, uh, to Steve and, and to Henry? Yeah, I'm just thinking from a process standpoint. I mean, these, as long as they understand that this is what's coming from our committee, um, but we need to report back to our, our authorizing boards, um, but at least it gives them time to start thinking about it. And then that way, if for whatever reason, the planning board or select board want to kind of tweak what we're proposing, um, we'd have an opportunity to, to kind of update that ask, I guess. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think I think that makes sense. I mean, I, I, again, you know, um, because this the, there is no obligation to anything that you know comes out of you know these these projects, especially you know the undergraduate student projects where they're, where they're more exploratory and again more a thought exercise. Um, you know, I think the only thing that I would maybe propose how this would be introduced maybe to the select board and or the planning board is that, you know, again, that these, these are thought exercises not binding anybody, right? Like you, you don't want to get people too wound up and too concerned about, you know, getting this right. I don't know if it's about getting it right, you know, especially the undergraduate projects that may come out of this. It's more about, you know, using imagination that maybe breaking things and, and not getting it right, but elements are, are, you know, something that can be worked on. I think you have to be much more careful, especially if, if, if there is a, an idea about committing funds to the centers, that's where I think, you know, the, the planning board and the, and the select board really would have to think long and hard at exactly what you want to get out of that. Uh, because, the, you know, that, that would be something that would be information that would be a little bit more, um, I wouldn't, again, not binding, but, you know, supportive of, of what the objectives of the master plan are and how you, how you reach them. You know, that, that's where you want to use that as a useful tool that's actually going to unlock real change, whereas the other one is a useful tool that's just going to, you know, maybe get us to think about more things along the line. That was long-winded, but I think you get it. Yep. No, I understand. Especially at, <clears throat> at the undergraduate level, we are not looking for construction design drawings. We're looking for just different ideas. Yes, different and, visions. And we want it to be a useful project 
for educational purposes as well, because that's how we get the attention of the uh, faculty that, um, and, and maybe that's the next step we should do. If Ollie, if you want to try taking a, a stab at putting this together and then maybe I can take a stab at editing it. And then uh, if it's just the two of us working together, we can not trigger any open meeting issues and then we can forward it to uh, the faculty contacts and say, is there, is this something you can work with? Do we need more detail? Do we need less detail? And then I'd like to, before we then start talking with the select board and planning board, I'd like to have a sense that there is there's been some two-way communication here and that we've proposed a few things. UMass is interested in taking a look at some of those and uh, here's, here's the menu. Um, I'm at no point talking to the select board about what we're going to send over to the schools and only to find out that that's not what they want to look at. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable with that approach if everybody else is. And we certainly can yeah. set up another meeting before we actually throw anything out the door. Um, then we can circulate it and have a meeting to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Which, again, we can do on very short uh, notice. Okay. All right. Well, why don't why don't we plan on doing that then? So Bill and I will put our heads together. We'll draft something, um, and then uh, decide if it you know if we think it makes sense that we have another meeting in, in advance because our next meeting wouldn't be until the third um, third Thursday in May at this point. And I think you know again we want to move this along as best we can, at least getting it into the hands of the folks at the university. Yes, well, we still have their attention before they yeah. start thinking of packing flip-flops and T-shirts and heading to the beach. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, um, that's a plan. Mm -hmm. Hate to make a motion to adjourn just as Crystal joins us. But I know. <laughs> We're just finishing, Crystal. <laughs> I know I got off work late and I was just like, oh my goodness, now I missed the meeting. We That's are uh, we are recording it. Okay, good, good, good. So uh, I'll I will send you a direct link to the recording when I send it into uh, uh, when I send it into uh, Hadley Media. Thank you. Uh, I'll make sure you get the direct link to it as well. I appreciate that. I am so sorry again. I apologize. Nope, no problem. No, no worries. Yeah, you can always give me a call, uh, Crystal, too, if you need to, okay? Thank you, Molly. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, I guess, like Bill said, it's time to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, so I don't, do we need a formal motion to adjourn at 723? Yes. Second. I, I need the motion. Third. I second. All right. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.